Sri Ramana Sagasram, verse 1, by yeah. Sri, by Sri Sadhu, um, with commentary. Annamalayam Arivutkanalumenai Unna vidil yavaral unnumo Vinno tum Meyarivu bodhikke vendadala thondiyani Noyyanana yungadekkan nokku Om Namo Bhagavate Shri Arunachalaramanaya. So, um, we will discuss this verse briefly. We will first start with um, uh, the, the lines which say, You who as a mighty column of hot flame sowed, that you might to maul an iron true wisdom of food. <coughs> this, is refer this is in reference to um, uh, a well-known story, uh, the story behind Thiruvannamalai. Mm -hmm. And we will um, look at the story today. Michael has made a very good summary of the story. So I will just um, go over the story and then we'll look at the significance of the story and we'll come back to this verse. <coughs> Excuse me. So Brahma, the aspect of God, who is responsible for the creation of this world appearance, and Vishnu, the aspect of God, who is responsible for its sustenance, stability, or protection, were once gripped by pride and were therefore quarreling with each other about which of them was the greatest. So, to resolve their argument, Siva, the aspect of God who is responsible for the final dissolution or destruction of this world appearance, manifested in the midst as a vast column of light, the top and bottom of which could not be seen. Wondering how this column had appeared and was enduring, even though it had not been created by Brahma and was not being sustained by Vishnu, they decided that they could resolve their argument by seeing which one of them could reach its top or bottom. Therefore, Brahma assumed the form of a swan and began flying upwards in order to find the summit of the column. While Vishnu took the form of a boar and began burrowing deep into the ground 
in order to find its foot. Though Brahma flew upwards for many years, he could not reach the summit. So, he eventually gave up all hope of ever reaching it. However, though he knew that he had failed, his pride and egotism were not subdued. So, he decided to tell a lie, saying that, he had reached the summit. In the meanwhile, Vishnu also understood that he would never be able to reach the foot of the self-luminous column. But unlike Brahma, his pride and egotism were thereby subdued. So, he decided to return and humbly admit his failure. Therefore, when he and Brahma finally returned and met at that starting point, he honestly admitted that he was unable to reach the foot and being sure that Brahma would not have been able to reach the summit, he declared, that whatever the column of light may be, it was greater than either of them. And hence, he began to praise it as the Supreme Lord of all. Brahma laughed in derision, declaring that he had reached the summit and mocking Vishnu, saying that, he was praising the column only because of his failure and that he should instead praise him, that is Brahma, since he had proved himself to be the greatest of all. Seeing the dishonesty and arrogance of Brahma, Shiva manifested himself in his normal form from within the column and declared Brahma to be a liar. Since Vishnu had lost his ego in his attempt to find the foot of Shiva, the column of light he merged and became one with him. And hence, since that time, he is worshipped as a equal of Shiva. However, since Brahma was humbled only after Shiva declared him to be a liar, he was cursed never to be worshipped in any temple and hence is worshipped only through Vedic rituals, which are the Kamya Karmas, actions performed for the fulfillment of selfish desires. After Shiva thus blessed Vishnu and cursed Brahma, Vishnu understood that he had been possessed by egotism because he had forgotten Shiva, who is the one real self of all. And hence, he prayed to him, never to allow him to forget him again. He also prayed to Shiva, saying that he could not sustain the world in the presence of the column of light, which was the light of Atmanyana, or true self-knowledge, and therefore beseeched him to assume a seemingly lackluster form on earth so that people could remember him and thereby be saved from the delusion of egotism. Therefore, in answer to this prayer of Vishnu, Shiva contracted his form as the column of light into the form of the holy mountain Arunachala, mere remembrance of which will subdue our ego. In this story, Shiva 
in the form of Arunachala, the mountain of light, symbolizes our real self, which is the original light of pure non-dual self-consciousness I am. Vishnu symbolizes our ego, the distorted and deluded form of self-consciousness that experiences itself as I am this body. And Brahma symbolizes our intellect, the reflected light of consciousness by which we try to understand the external world, which appears as soon as we imagine ourselves to be a body. So Brahma flying upwards to find the summit of the column symbolizes the effort that we make to understand the truth of the world, God and ourself through our outward going intellect, which seeks to know the reality by extroverted means such as science, religion or philosophy. So long as we thus direct our efforts outwards away from our essential self, I am, we can never know the reality as it truly is. And whatever knowledge we gain thereby is only a lie, an illusion or maya, an ins insubstantial and self-delusive semblance of true knowledge. So I'll read this again. Brahma flying upwards to find the summit of the column symbolizes the effort that we make to understand the truth of the world, God and ourself through our outward going intellect, which seeks to know the reality by extroverted means such as science, religion or philosophy. So long as we thus direct our efforts outwards, away from our own essential self, I am, we can never know the reality as it truly is. And whatever knowledge we gain thereby is only a lie, an illusion or maya, an insubstantial and self-delusive semblance of true knowledge. So before I proceed further, I will stop right here and see if there are any questions or comments. If not, let's see the significance of Vishnu burrowing deep. Vishnu burrowing deep down into the ground to find the foot of the column symbolizes the effort that we make to experience the reality of ourself, the one consciousness that alone knows the seeming existence of both the world and God, by penetrating deep into our heart, the innermost core or center of our being. Only when we thus direct our efforts inwards towards our essential self-conscious being I am, can we free ourselves from the self-delusive grip of our ego and thereby experience ourselves as we really are. Only when we thus experience ourselves as we really are, will we truly know the reality, not only of ourselves, but also of both the world and God. So this is an important point. So let me go over the keep, I mean, the sentence, uh, the paragraph again. Vishnu burrowing deep into the ground to find the foot of the column symbolizes the effort that we make to experience the reality of ourself. The one consciousness that alone knows the seeming existence of both the world and God. 
by penetrating deep into our heart, the innermost core or center of our being. Only when we thus direct our efforts inwards towards our own essential self-conscious being I am, can we free ourselves from the self-delusive grip of our ego and thereby experience ourselves as we really are. And only when we thus experience ourselves as we really are, will we truly know the reality, not only of ourself, but also of both the world and God. So, at this point, I, um, I want to share a picture with um, Robert um, sent me. And this is a um, nice picture. Um, Robert, could you um, tell us um, the origin of this picture, if you know? Yes, it's in uh, a, co a copy of the Tamil Ar Aranashra Puranam, which mm -hmm. uh, contains printed about 1910 and it's interspersed with these called woodcuts uh, which mm -hmm. uh, illustrate various episodes in the story of the Arachid Puranam and this is the one relating to uh, obviously the appearance of the column of fire you see Aranachar in the middle and yeah the whole thing bathed in fire and Vishnu and anyway you're right. going to no, no, go ahead, go ahead yeah I'm going to just draw the line here so this is the hill that Robert is talking about that's, and you see the fire. So it represents a column of fire, the hill and the fire. And uh, what else do you see in this picture, Robert? Well, we see um, Brahma as the as the swan. Right, that one right there. And then just below him, we see hard to make out, but we see a boar. Uh, right there, yeah. Which is Vishnu, and mm -hmm. above Brahma, we see the screw pine flower, which is being fallen falling for thousands of years from the crown mm. of Lord Shiva and thus the flower that Brahma encounters and asks, asks the flower to lie on his behalf to Vishnu that um, Brahma has actually seen the head. And, oh, uh, agree. <laughs> so he's, 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 he's creating a fake witness there. Yes. <laughs> so the flower promised him faithfully that he will lie on his behalf, which, which he does. Yeah. And life posed by Shiva, of course. What's that name of the flower? The Talambu? It's a uh, Tarampu or Tarai. It's a screw pine. It grows by the seashores. It's a fantastic mm. plant. It's sort of got a knotted sort of uh, a knotted sort of stem, uh, mm. like sort of like bamboo, with massive uh, displays of leaves, and it has this beautiful sort of creamy white flower that splays out in a kind of a trumpet and, a, and has an amazing red fruit as well. But um, uh, it's in some parts of South India, it's quite common along the seashores. Yeah, it's really nice. And then I also see um, a person prostrating, probably symbolizing surrender. Um, yeah, I think he just surrenders. Uh, yeah, yeah, so self surrender, you know, Bhakti, Bhagwan used to say Bhakti is the mother of Jnana, Bhakti is Jnana Mata. So he surrender, and eventually that leads to Jnana, and the fire of self knowledge shines within us. And, and um, that is beautifully, this whole story and the symbolism of Michael has beautifully explained that. And now with this uh, picture, which Robert pointed out to me, is beautifully uh, explaining this whole story or capturing this whole story. Anyone else wants to comment on it or any questions? Yeah, I wasn't uh, thinking about this before, but looking at the temple, mm -hmm. which, you know, pictured as well, uh, it appears to me that uh, this mountain, like Bhagavan says, is uh, you know, it's a uh, it's not just Shiva alone, Shiva and Shakti together uh, as one, mm -hmm. right? And the temple in Arunachala has uh, the idea, uh, you know, displayed in the form of uh, Shiva as a uh, lingam. Mm. 
in the, and then uh, the Devi or the Shakti or the Maya uh, as, uh, with, with the name Unna Mulai Amman. Hmm. Unna Mulai Amman is the one who is uh, in, in, you know, integrated with Shiva in, and then she in the form of a she. She is ready to be, you know, ready for creation of the world. But um, like, uh, you know, one of the uh, Swamiji's whom I had uh, met, like he says, uh, she represents the mother who is uh, ready to suckle the babies to be born, but she has not yet uh, done that job. So it's Unna Mulai mm. is, represents the, the seed form of creation mm. to the one became two and the two is ready to become several or multitudes or infinite forms of creation but Unamulayaman you know represents so they uh, coming back to Bhagavan's uh, interpretation this uh, mountain itself uh, is a representation of that concept and the temple and the um, idols in there are mm -hmm. more explicit demonstration of that concept right thank you thank you any other comments questions uh, this, is, this is param what i feel is yeah. actually the the flower it represents the energy the, the fire energy the, the energy is the source of all creation and within that within that energy uh, we could see the the temple the tree, the coconut, like uh, coconut tree, and uh, all of the structures. So all these are in the creation, the basis mm -hmm. of the cre the, the subtratum of the creation, or the, the basis of the creation is the fire energy. That is uh, fire en energy. So uh, that's what by, uh, I understand. The energy is the source of all creation, uh, and uh, beyond that, uh, uh, things we 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 cannot or we cannot the grasp the uh, actual real separatum of the creation. That's why recently even the, uh, the quantum physics scientists also, they have uh, declared that we cannot truly understand the state of the universe before the Big Bang. Before the Big Bang, we, we cannot be, ev never ever be able to understand the real nature of the universe. Like that the morning also, uh, when I woke up, I could. A uh, uh, thought came to me: we will not be really understand our full effulgence of our true nature, because, because uh, the, the, that is beyond our beyond our imagination or the concept. Um, that's what uh, the morning it came to my mind. We, we yeah. won't be able to un really understand, never understand our true nature. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. So. You will, we will not be able to understand what we can experience it. And that is self. So because that, that one spirit, that one energy, that's the basis or substratum of all is your own self. Yeah. And, yeah. and is your own self. So you won't be able to understand with the ego because by definition that that self is a state and the ego is not there. It's the ego that always tries to understand. So you will never understand, that is an accurate statement, but you can experience it when there is sure. no ego. Yeah. And that is our goal of our spiritual pursuit. Yeah. And, and the experience also when there is two things, when there is two things only experience. So experience, it's actually the knower, the knower itself is, is the separate. And then, then, then uh, there is no second to it. So Exactly. Uh, there is no known. I mean, like there is, yeah. there is no, the triad of knower, known, and something to be known is not there. There's yeah, just, there, there's just. So there won't be any question of experience also, no? That is true. Uh, there is no verb, but they, that's the closest word I can come up with. But then it yeah. is just that. You will be, you know. Yeah. And yourself realize you are just the self. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. So. Um, coming back to the verse, um, it's a nice uh, poetic translation by um, Robert. And um, 
So he wrote, who else is a power to swallow me entire, if not our Lord anomaly, true knowledge is fire. Um, so that concept there, why would a devotee pray? Anomaly represents ourself, of course, we saw that. Why are we praying to ourself and only self can help us with self-knowledge? Robert, do you have any thoughts on it? Well, anomaly is ourself, but we, uh, and especially in the early stages, we need to externalize that to develop the kind of bhakti that goes, you know, the devotion that goes with uh, the jnana, the knowledge, the insight, because uh, bhakti and jnana work together. In order for jnana to work, there has to be complete trust, complete reliance. Therefore, we can create these outside forms. In fact, Bhagavan even didn't have a guru, but he made, he, he, he did because from a very early age, he saw Tukaranashala as his guru. And uh, there are another level to that, of course, uh, all the jnanis even realized they, they all reverence the self in some external form because the world itself, in fact, as the self exists, the Arunachala exists in the self and if we have the right understanding, we can worship it. In fact, it's probably a good thing to worship it because it, it, it helps to cut down our own ego, our own pride. And so gradually we develop the jnana and bhakti together. Uh, sometimes, sometimes we're in a position where we're quite desperate and we have to hold on to the Lord's feet. That's mm -hmm. like bhakti because we think it's, the mind's going to sweep us away. Other times we feel quite calm and we can just go inside and dwell on our being and do self-attention. But I mean, I've found many times, uh, I actually use my, what I call my Bhagavan blanket. If things get tough, uh, you can put yourself totally in his hands and say, mm -hmm. you can do this. And so you get these two aspects working side by side, uh, the true knowledge and then anomalize the externalized uh, South, South. exactly. Yeah, in the world, as it were. Good, good. Thank you. Um, and then I noticed um, that the devotee, Sadhuvam here, prays, <clears throat> he uses the word, um, the noyan in a, so worthless me. Um, Anand, you want to, uh, what are your thoughts on this? Why does he say, why does the uh, devotee self-deprecate, worthless me. No, it's not uh, uncommon in, among uh, uh, devotees, you know, when you, uh, when you surrender, use the surrender uh, path, one can extrapolate it also, I mean, use it also for the self-realization. What is being done is uh, uh, starting from uh, uh, an origin which is based on ego, and that is um, a yeah, worthless, uh, worthless starting point. Right? Bhagavan also says, mm -hmm. I am uh, worse than you know, a dog. Uh, a dog. Yeah. And this uh, dog analysis uh, or dog analog analogy has been given by many, many Tamil devotees in particular. I don't know about in Sanskrit literature. Uh, Manika Vajagar, for example, uses the word uh, naya, in, you know, right from the very first uh, verse of Thiruvachaka. Nāyil kadayai kidanda adiyerke thāyil chiranda dayavana tattuvane. One who was worse than, a, uh, worse than a dog, not even a dog, worse than a dog. And you uh, offered me a position, you know, by, with the kindness of uh, a mother. And at the very end of Thiruvachaka, same thing, same... Uh, word you, you, is used and uh, the, the, that's a beautiful verse where he also says that he achieved by praying to him with uh, the humility with the, which which is equivalent to a complete absence of ego he achieved, uh, shiva gave him the true uh, you know uh, self realized state where he says uh, uh, one who was roaming around as a, a truly ignorant person, mm. uh, 
மும்மை மலம் அறிவித்து முதலாய முதல் வந்தான் நம்மையும் அவர் பொருளாக்கி நாய் சிவிகை ஏற்றிவித்த யூ ஜஸ்ட் எலிவேட்டட் அ டாக் டு தி டு தி லெவல் ஆஃப் ஞானி ரைட் ஸோ ஸோ தட் தட் அப்ரோச் இஸ் வாட் பிரம்மா அண்ட் விஷ்ணு லேக்ட் ஸோ தே they they thought too much about themselves you know mm. and uh, in fact you know when brahma and uh, vishnu started the job uh, the of, of fact, finding the yeah, column yeah, or the, the end yeah, of column yeah. Uh, yeah the very fact that there is a fire which means a uh, yeah, power of destruction uh, that is nothing mm. is uh, perennial you know everything is uh, transitory so uh, you know, so what uh, brahma creates or what vishnu maintains both are to be consumed eventually the the mm. right the exact yeah instability of the whole thing right. so they forget forgot that all their efforts are going to be annihil- annihilated soon right yeah so um the worthless me i think anand gave multiple examples it's uh, it's just a, um, it's a sign of humility it's a it's a sign of surrender um to 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 god or guru um and uh michael in one of his recent sessions made this point also clear and as a devotee progresses uh spiritually matures more and more even minor imperfections start becoming more obvious mm-hmm. you know just as a you know on a on a on a, a board blackboard uh, as it you know as we make it clean and clean then even minor spots become more obvious so same manner it becomes more obvious and that's another reason why um they have such a humble approach they see the the faults which a uh, lot of faults which the normal person wouldn't even see and that sort of humility is needed um so that um i just want to do a quick check if there are any other comments uh if not we'll conclude um this yeah. segment Yes, well, go actually, ahead. Uh, again, uh, Param here. Uh, yeah. Actually, when we, re- re- actually re- when we, when we uh, expand our consciousness and uh, we could see uh, it goes on expanding and goes on, uh, go to the infinitude. The, the expanse is, it, it never ends. So, then ultimately, it never ends because even the, they say the space is expanding. Space is expanding. There is no reason. There is no limit. Uh, for the expansion and it, there the, even scientist doesn't know where it goes uh, in which so like that even when we expand our consciousness there is no limit to the, our expansion and ultimately we, we we have to come to come down and we see we are we are actually nothing we, we actually we we, uh, we we become insignificant when we compare to the expansion the limit of expansion and when when we go inward then we we only feel we are another we are insignificant and nothing that is my humble understanding thank you yeah and the we you're referring to is the ego finally the Correct. ego goes away and the ego goes away then you realize that you are that vast expanse itself that's right yeah. thank you you're welcome um murugan did you have a comment yes um, i have a question for uh, rao butler mm-hmm. um what is the significance of uh, 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 the suffix om in a couple of instances in this verse. So in the first line you have kanalum and the last line you have nuyen yenayum. So it seems to be... I didn't hear the question. Um, Significance the, of... The suffix om. Uh, for example, in the first line you have uh, arivu kanalum. kanalum. As opposed to just arivu ah, kanalum. Hmm. so it seems to me like it's almost saying i've tried a lot of things nothing worked and now even this if, even if this doesn't work then then what is, is that a good interpretation i i did think uh, quite a lot about this um and i didn't include it in the translation because i didn't actually see uh what it was I'll just may have a look and Anand, any thoughts? Oh, <clears throat> yeah, I agree with uh, Murugan. You know, the an- Kanalum is, you know, uh, it's, um, 
it's understandable that uh, lesser uh, gods or lesser, you know, uh, uh, lower appro approaches, if they don't take me to realization, uh, that's understandable. But uh, even, you know, the, the uh, flame of knowledge, if doesn't, if, if it does not, you know, eat me, meaning that swallow me. So I suppose then, you could say, if not uh, even are an amalai. That's what I'm saying, right? So if not you, I mean, you are the basic ultimate. You, you, only you can do it, right? Yeah. So you were, you're putting that stress yeah. in there. That's, okay. that's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, the stress, I should have put, if not even, are not Lord yeah. Aaron. Oh, Morgan was correct. I, yeah. I missed that <laughs> in the yeah. translation. Yeah, yeah, not even has the power. Correct. Right. Um, before I conclude, um, just to quickly, those, those may be wondering who, who is Maul and Ayan. Maul refers to Vishnu and Ayan to Brahma. And uh, uh, here uh, in the Tamil words, use the word Vinnorkum, which, uh, which refers to heavenly spirits, but specifically in the context of this story, refers to Maul and uh, Ayan, Vishnu and Brahma. Yeah. So, uh, right. can I make a... Yeah, sure. Swami, Swami, is, uh, Swami does not, in his verse, use those words explicitly, you know, like Maul and Ayan. Yeah, exactly. That's what he it says. Yeah. Vinorka, yeah. Which could be interpreted, uh, you know, with uh, some extrapolation that what was taught to Maul and Ayan uh, is a lesson to everyone. Like right. uh, all the devas realize that, you know, it, it is not Maul or Ayan who is supreme. The supreme, no, he, uh, he the, could be uh, saying Vinorkum, like just, they're just gods. It doesn't matter what they're called; they're just some other gods. So it gives right. that, yeah, Vinorkum. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But he obviously needs it for the meter. But it, it gives that sense. Well, these couple of other gods, I don't really remember their names. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much.